Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. Um, so today we've got another podcast episode and I have a guest with me who is going to talk about developing business, soul reading, past lives and soul purpose. And it's Veronica Wildover. Hello, Veronica. Hello. And thank you for having me today. You're welcome. I'm really interested to find out about what you do in your business and how you got into this um, soul reading thing because it, it's a very sort of different um, thing that I've like come across. I've heard about tarot card reading, things like that. But um, the soul reading is something I've, um, it's just a new thing that I've come across. So I'm interested yeah. to find out. Yeah, the, thank you. Uh, thank you for asking. So I used to be a project manager in IT. Um, I, I did a lot of spiritual stuff sideways. I never thought I would be spiritual business owner myself. But then lockdown hit and I couldn't, um, we didn't have any shows with my band. So I was asking for guidance from above, like, okay, so what is my purpose here? Um, I, I've heard or I was guided to uh, the message that that it's connecting people with their soul. And I didn't know what it was back then, <laughs> what, it, what it means or what should I do. So I was like, hmm, maybe I'm becoming crazy. <laughs> uh, but I, I tried, I was, uh, I had many friends who were willing to try and I would be sitting with them and trying to connect with this divine energy, which I felt in my heart. And um, over time I started receiving messages about their past lives and soul purpose and uh, at, at the first it was just few ideas words or images but when I named it in the most truthful and vulnerable way possible it would expand to more um, to, to longer story to bigger vision and so on so I learned that if I really connect my heart to the process mm -hmm. then uh, it's it works. So since then I'm doing this and <laughs> uh, after two years of giving soul readings for my clients, I left IT and I became full-time soul reader. So that's my that's very story. impressive. Very impressive. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. And I think uh, for many people, it might be confusing. Like, what is it? Why, how it works? Uh, what I'm actually doing, if I do it on a uh, subway, you know, to, to strangers or <laughs> if I can guess your credit card number or something and uh, not, not really. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, um, I only receive people after their request. When, when they ask, when they really come to the reading, then I uh, ask for opening their soul records. Um, I never uh, see numbers or anything. <laughs> And soul is never judging. Um, so it's always compassionate. So even though sometimes clients are judging to themselves, they feel like oh, maybe my soul will tell me that I messed up and my life is disaster and I don't want to hear that. The soul is always very loving, compassionate, never judging. Always, it, She always takes it as experience um, and she always sees or it I don't know how, how would I call it in English? Is soul in English she or it or he? That's whatever you perceive it to be, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because in, in Czech, it's she as, as a name, um, like Rose, for example. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it doesn't have any gender or, or uh, as per se, it's just the energy. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, yeah, so she's never never judging. Um, uh, everything is experience and she always sees many choices in every moment. So no matter what situation you are going through, uh, if you are having a hard time in, at work or in your relationship, so it's like this loving software, looking at it from above, seeing many options in every minute saying, yeah, if you choose this direction, it will create this energy. And if you choose this direction, it will create another kind of energy. Um, 
so then um, people who experience soul reading usually feel more connected to themselves and they make kind of choices they like now like oh okay that's why i am here in this situation okay i will choose differently or i will stay in this relationship because it makes sense for me now so that's, that's, that's interesting because obviously with different energies you've got different emotions as well um, and I know that I've studied quite a lot of personal development. And so um, have you come across the energy spiral where they talk about the negative energies on the spiral down and the positive energies on the spiral up? I think I saw it, it as a picture uh, like somewhere in on social media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is it like a methodology or... Uh... It's basically the different emotions that people feel. They can be like just natural emotions, sadness and anger, um, you know, and something that happens with a situation where a person can then spiral down into the lower vibrational energies, like the sadness, depression and all of that. And quite often when people don't see any improvements, they just keep on going lower and lower and lower. Um, which is not good for the for the soul, <laughs> not good for the bear, the body, and it's not good for the mind. Um, so I, I actually um, did a, a short class on on that type of thing a few weeks back on the and the the energy spiral. Um, so what you were saying is this soul reading is a more positive experience. For people but it you can say it gives options there's options where they can take one path which might be a better path to go whereas the other path might not lead to the success that they're looking for is that what you're saying yes definitely and um, thank you for saying that you nailed it <laughs> uh, uh, so so what is your suggestion or idea on uh keeping yourself in this higher vibrational state um, there's a lot of obviously what I'm looking at is how you first of all what I did in my situation was I actually was to um, start writing so writing letters I believe in writing letters to the universe if you've got like problems and issues some people might just journal every morning and just journal their thoughts and write things out um, but for me it was like I needed to get a lot of anger a lot of resentment and things out so I did that so I was writing a lot the other thing is um, affirmations and meditation um, I did a lot every morning meditations and affirmations um, and the other thing is physical basically exercise and enjoying yourself so like art and yoga going for walks in the countryside, reconnecting with nature. So these are all the things that I look at in how, how you can sort of raise your energy levels. Um, dance, that's another good one that raises your energy level. And singing, because if you can turn a song on that you love to listen to and start singing along to the tune, quite soon you can feel the energy lift just from your voice and the resonance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. I think, yeah, I think everybody has their own keys to to happiness, and uh, everybody mm, feels different. Uh, I don't how old I put it. <laughs> Even when I teach soul reading, each uh, each individual has different keys to connection with their spiritual self or this high vibrational energy. So it's it's awesome that you have so many tools. In your pocket you are like oh whoever wants to join my mind seminar <laughs> it's like 30 people so here you have 30 tools and <laughs> you can you can choose which works for you yes so it's beautiful so uh, um tell us a bit more about how you do the uh, the the past lives thing because obviously that's is that belonging to the person it's the past life of the person yeah, that's the mystery of life. Uh, at the beginning, I, I really thought it's past life of the person. Um, um, so when we go to, to Akashic Records, because every soul has records of 
their choices, if I might say this way. It's uh, we can look to the history of the soul and see, okay, you experience this on this earth. And sometimes there are memories from other planets as well. I, I wouldn't dare to go to much detail, but <laughs> sometimes there are just memories like this. And people struggle with different topics in their life. And uh, so always uh, reveals past life, which is important to that very topic. We never have to go through thousands of incarnations and solve everything which happened in the past. It's more like, okay, now you are struggling with money. So let's look into what happened to you in the past with money. And sometimes soul reveals one life or two lives or three lives, different situations which were connected to this very topic in this moment, in this lifetime. And we heal it through releasing bad energy, not bad energy, but bad emotions or negative beliefs about the person. Um, so, so yeah, I think at the beginning, I thought it all belonged to the person, but now I feel that the soul just sends stories which will help you to understand what happened to you and understand yourself better. And sometimes it was past life and sometimes it's just suggestion or the memory or like the story which will help you tune more into your feelings and belief system and understand why did you choose what you are choosing and choose differently. Mm. And as, yeah, and, and there is always this uh, line of truth in it. So, so it's based on inner resonance. It's always like the people who are <laughs> experiencing the past life regression, they, for example, go to Egypt and they are like, yeah, I was this pharaoh and, <laughs> but there, there are thousands of people now, now here, you know, and uh, some thousands of people can have this feeling. I was specifically this pharaoh, which necessarily doesn't have to be true, but what is true about it is your feeling about it. And Okay, so, so the question is, why do you feel like you were a pharaoh? Okay, because I, I feel like I killed so many people. So <laughs> the story under it is the guilt and a feeling like I'm not good enough. Okay, so, so we are clearing this negative self-belief and, and emotion. And it doesn't matter if it happened in the past life or if it happened in your childhood or where exactly, because when you feel release, relief and you change your negative belief about yourself this is what matters the most hmm. that's <laughs> interesting um because a lot of people have the unworthy thing the, the past the limiting beliefs um and money is one of the big subjects isn't it where people struggle quite often with hardships and things like that in in order to move forward they always have to look at the role that money plays had they been conditioned as a child like money doesn't grow on trees type of thing which then gives them this limited belief or like that they didn't have a lot of money when they were in their family and so they they were always like um cutting back or uh you know not being extravagant with things and so you don't think in terms of abundance and lots of money out there you, you turn to think in terms of lack and limitation do you find that in with speaking to your clients definitely in, in many forms um uh, i think part of, part of it is also culture heritage because here we uh, our parents and grandparents didn't have many options and, and until 1989, we couldn't travel and we couldn't start our business and until the revolution. <laughs> so <laughs> you can still feel it in a subconscious level. Um, I was born in 1990. So mm -hmm. I was born into a culture where uh, people celebrated freedom and yeah, we, we suddenly can travel and we can go abroad and it's amazing. And um, we can get better jobs and we can finally do what we want to because we don't have communist party <laughs> anymore. Um, uh, so that was awesome. But all this negative conditioning underneath, like <clears throat> I cannot dare to do much in my life. I, I cannot stand from the crowd. Um, I cannot have more money than my neighbors because then I would be judged or the government will take it all from me or the church will take it all from me. And um, 
there is always this feeling like I cannot mm, I cannot shine more than the others. I cannot have more shiny business or so so we are mostly looking into this because our parents were already growing in a uh, like they had, they had more freedoms than our grandparents, but still the conditioning is still there in our body uh, on a subconscious level and it uh, manifests in uh, subtle forms like for example not asking for uh, pay rise in, mm -hmm. in in your job or not daring to go to higher position or not starting your spiritual business because what if somebody will judge you or will take you to prison <laughs> um, so this is our body whispers like hey don't go there it's not safe and you remember that your ancestors died because of that and uh so we are creating that and um it doesn't really matter what is what is it or if the story really happened in the way we remember it the, i think they always the most important thing is to go into body and release the emotion and the belief which is stored there and if possible um, transform it into another belief or record new more optimistic vision of yourself or for yourself um, and yeah it's never ending process <laughs> yeah. I think you, you're right with that one it's definitely a process and it, it's you've got to keep on working on that process um, because if you've got something that's a bad habit then you need to replace that bad habit like I was I've procrastinated a lot on different things in my life whether to do this thing how to do this thing can I even do this thing <laughs> and so you get on into this like rhythm of procrastination quite a lot mm -hmm. um, but when you get excited about something and and when you feel passionate about something there isn't very much procrastination because you can start something and you're like um a creator, an inventor, you think about the thing and you're trying to create something new. And if you've listened or like looked at um, stories of other inventors, sometimes it's like the mad professor type thing. And um, people can sort of work right through all night, all the next day. And so they'll just cre be creating, creating, creating and stay at up hours on end before they actually say right okay now I need to rest mm. um, that's the way I've seen myself work in the past with um, business and creating things even when I was writing my first book I was in two minds all the time and so I was procrastinating quite a lot but then I got to a point where I thought right okay no let's do this and so I couldn't remember sitting up till three o'clock in the morning, actually typing and editing and typing <laughs> to, to get like to a closer finish of a product so I could actually publish my first book because I, I didn't have help for that. So mm. yeah, it's, it's a process, it's a long process. Um, so I'm just wondering what sort of things the clients see um, once you've done either a sole purpose or the past life's thing. It's like, what feedback do you get from your clients then? Well, I must admit that it's, um, it's a lot and a lot of positive feedback because they feel more connected and more loving to themselves. And it's definitely the spiritual journey. So it's not for everyone. I understand that I have most the clients who are already on the spiritual path and they have this natural connection to something bigger than themselves and they are looking at the world from spiritual uh, point of view uh, but after the session they feel this heart opening and a connection to who they truly are even if it was just a tiny shift in their heart it, it always matters and sometimes now so what i say as a prayer at the beginning of the soul reading is uh okay i ask to be connected to the highest truth highest love and highest good for myself and the, and the person um uh sometimes the highest truth is that you that your marriage is actually much better than you thought because sometimes i have clients who 
are doubting their relationship or or their job and they are like okay there there's a lot of messy emotions and a lot of negative beliefs and um there is happening this and this and that but from the soul perspective the soul always see the meaning behind this all and and it always sees okay so maybe your husband does that but you are here in this situation because you are learning this and sometimes this understanding leads to recognition oh wow but we are actually like the best lovers possible <laughs> this is the best thing which ever happened to me and, and okay i will stay here and i will put more work into it because now i feel the sense um i can i can see the meaning inside and sometimes on the other hand it's like oh yes i'm staying in a job which is very toxic and i and i don't feel worthy to leave but now when i see why i don't feel worthy i'm choosing differently for myself so it's still a process it's not like after one session you are like yeah hey, i'm changing everything and i'm leaving or staying and sometimes it needs more of your processing and more work on yourself still it's still work uh and self-development but this soul connection will helps you see yourself more clearly and um, usually see yourself in better light see mm -hmm. yourself more worthy um actually recognizing what is authentic to you because sometimes you are staying in situations where we feel like we have to be there or because our parents were used to be there uh, and for, for for so many reasons <laughs> we just stay in the situations which are not good for us so after recognizing your worth and your sole purpose and and many possibilities many other options you are you feel more at peace with who you are and you can choose better for yourself mm, that's that's interesting um work situations haven't been for me um i've never really liked employed situations i've never really connected um, I think I've only had one employed situation where I actually ended the job correctly. <laughs> Should I say it? Because a lot of employed situations that I had, I just walked out of the door and said, goodbye, I'm not <laughs> staying here. Didn't give notice or anything. I just picked my bag up and said, I'm off. If Because if you don't feel as if you've been treated right, then... <laughs> why would you stay to be treated badly bullied or you know talked down to or it it just it doesn't it didn't help and resonate with me so there's been situations where i've just said right i'm out um, and that's that's the way i've been as i know some people can get trapped in their work as well yeah it's like you said, you can be really unhappy, but you do, you go to work, you just keep getting up in the morning, keep going to work, come back. You you hardly have a life because you're always at work and you have a very limited amount of time back in, in your home. And then you've got to request holidays and then it's up to the management if you get the holidays. <laughs> so I can see that some people do get, into that situation but can't find a way out so what you've done being in your nine to five and being in that business you've actually then connected to something to actually get yourself out of that and create your own way forward um sort of entrepreneurial and spiritual at the same time is that right yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. um it wasn't it wasn't easy it it didn't it wasn't like oh my god i'm enlightened and woke and i am leaving my job and, and tomorrow i will start my business it was more like every every week giving sessions for free and then start charging a little bit and then dealing with all my feelings of i'm not maybe i'm not good enough for that or maybe i shouldn't charge as much and maybe i uh, maybe what, what i'm actually doing <laughs> and with every person who came to so reading there was always this little doubt hey like this person wants to know more about their purpose or about their marriage who am i to talk to them about that because i um uh, i had some background in therapies but i'm not a psychologist or i not not any specific um education on that <laughs> but uh 
that's the thing with soul reading that I, I connected to this higher energy and I always mm, like trusted this loving energy more than my doubt mm -hmm. and it slowly grew from that. So it was more like growing in heart, growing in trust, growing in trust to God, well, the way I perceive him. Um, and yeah, and slowly just leaving IT and trusting my business more and more and trusting myself <laughs> more and more in it. Well, it doesn't it doesn't just happen overnight. It does take a long time to establish and to, to do things. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter even if you've got a if you start with a business plan and you've got all of these projections and numbers and things which I've never done. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter, right? Because it still takes a process. Um and I have a, a millionaire mentor um, in a group with, and um, he always says, start now, get perfect later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing that he says quite a lot is every master was once a disaster. Right. So basically you start something, you don't know everything at the beginning, but you create the thing that you want to do then you're learning as you're going along and that's where and I mean nobody ends nobody picks up a guitar and starts strumming and think I'm going to be in concert next week does it no <laughs> it's the same with anything that you start business wise or anything like that it's that you're not you haven't mastered the skills at the start, but you can master the skills by being consistent and showing up and doing what you want to do and then learning while you're there. So even if you're starting a YouTube channel and you look at some people who've got like a million followers and all of these views on their videos, right? But if you scroll back to when they first started that business and when they first got live or the way they first put a video online and compare the beginning to where they are now, there's a massive difference, yeah. massive difference. So it's all about the process as you're going along as well. Exactly. So, and in learning learning as you go on you don't never ever give up on the learning new things that's the, way I, <laughs> that's the way I see things anyway you said you wrote a book right so mm -hmm. so you know about all those struggles of writing and judging yourself like oh what did I just wrote <laughs> and then fixing it and then writing it again that's correct yes because it was a very um the topic the subject that I was actually wanted to write about was my own life experience of like a relationship that I was in as well so writing about that relationship was very difficult to do um, and then I had to do some research about the legal systems and the laws and I had to do some research about trauma trauma bonds and how to heal like the healing journey so that's how I looked at writing as a way to heal the the other healing modalities of what you mm. can do the yoga the exercise the mindfulness the affirmations and things like that it's all part of it uh, mm. and that's why I've I put the, all of that into my first book mm. Mm. so when you say first book you mean that you wrote more of them <laughs> no I've got another book I haven't wrote it yet I've only got the cover mm. So basically, I've got the material for the next um, book that I'm going to write. Mm, congratulations. That's, that's exciting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's just basically because I've, I've experienced a lot in my life, but like these last three years have been one massive, um, what can I say? like a trauma from one trauma to another trauma to another trauma. And at the same time, learning something new, implement, learn something new, implement, learn something new, implement with the traumas, <laughs> which is like up, down, up, down. It's been really a bizarre time. But that's why I have to write this next book to explain what's happened 
and how it's happened. Um, so that's that's then my next sort of endeavor. Mm, beautiful. So good luck with that. And <laughs> Thank you. So I'm just checking that how much time we've got left. All right, a few minutes. Yeah. Okay. We've got a few minutes left. <laughs> so is there anything else that you would like to talk about in how have you had any struggles? I mean, the podcast we we call this podcast Mindset Money Success. And yeah. I think it all starts with mindset. You've got to get that right frame of mind first because you can't get to the success unless you've got that mindset. But the bit in the middle, the money bit, sometimes that's the struggle. That's the money-itis. I heard another coach say the other day, have you got money-itis? Because you can't you can't ask for the money or, the, or you, you do all these things and put things out but nothing's coming in. <laughs> so have you have you been through that yourself? Definitely. <laughs> like, so much. Uh, I, hmm, so I, I would like to make it short, as short as possible. <laughs> um, so it's of contribution to, to the listeners. But um, I actually had, I started with spiritual journey when I was 15 because I was in, in huge depression. And my parents uh, divorced when I was three. So my point of view on life was there is lack of love and, and relationships are dramatic. And uh, I was afraid of committed relationship until I was like 30. So <laughs> that was that. Um, but I guess uh, there were many moments in my life where I had to feel these depressive feelings and I had to deal with them and heal them. Uh, so when I started thinking about business, it felt more like um, saving myself from feeling like, and it wasn't just <coughs> lack of money. It was like hmm, that there is right now, there was a lockdown. And uh, when I was starting the business, there, there was a lockdown and I lost, I didn't lose my job. I still had my job, but I couldn't go to the office mm -hmm. and I couldn't go to the shows. So I felt this lack of interactions and, I just didn't feel good enough. I was at my home in my little flat with my little dog and <laughs> I uh, really struggled to feel empowered and I felt alone in this. Mm -hmm. So the money blocks came from, from that. Like you are here alone, you are starting on your own. There is nobody like uh, the live person there. There are just online people you are but seeing every day. Did you feel as if you didn't have help then at that, that point? You didn't have any support? Yes, I didn't have any support. I had a lot of uh, ads on Facebook. I mean, the ads kept showing me, hey, you need to use this strategy or that strategy. And I, I spent a lot of money, a lot of my savings on starting my business because I was trying to use a marketing agency. And uh, I, I had the support of that kind. And I was still working on my mindset throughout, uh, mm -hmm. throughout the journey. So that was the beginning of really working on my financial mindset. And then when I left IT and I started to be on my own and I was doing business from the way, for example, my parents did it, my mom did it because my mom is a psychologist and she was always very tired. Like throughout her life, she, she put so much energy into her business and into, into her clients. So at the beginning, I was like, okay, this is the way you do business. And this is the way you take care of your clients. You are supposed to be drained and tired all the time. So I was putting a lot of work on myself and uh, I didn't earn much. So with every bad feeling around that, with every um, long evening, which was full of work, I went back into my body and into my childhood or into whatever was there and I was clearing the negative beliefs around myself and uh, about the job and about the money and then slowly I think <clears throat> in a year it got to the point when I was actually earning more than I was spending which was beautiful which is good <laughs> that's always good <laughs> and then there came the moment when I uh, got into burnout and I was asking myself, okay, I'm working so much. I have enough money, but it doesn't feel joyful. So the yeah. next step was the question, okay, what will bring me more joy? 
and how can I earn more with less struggle? <laughs> and it was another layer of working on myself, like all, all those beliefs about, yeah, but work is supposed to be hard and money is supposed to come hard to you and you are supposed to do so much for money. Um, so I was creating that. And then I received this huge, amazing idea that I will do online course for star seats, which is like for a special term for people who yeah. feel like they're from different planet and mm -hmm. for general business owners it would be like ah this is so crazy such a crazy idea but here it was such a huge success for my community and and for my clients and for people i know that it really allowed me to travel to philippines and uh, <clears throat> to uh, do the whole online course from there to channel the messages from there um i still was able to pay for my mortgage and, and for everything so so yeah I, I think that following your joy and releasing all the negative beliefs around money will eventually get you to the point when you are like oh yes i am <laughs> business owner and it's amazing <laughs> yeah i know it's it feels really good um when you get to that point and i just remember when i started in business in the uk and it was property management and i hadn't a clue how property management worked i went into it anyway um i only wrote i didn't have a business plan nothing i just had a piece of paper and i wrote double the business in three months double the business in the next three months and that's my business plan <laughs> well it's amazing <laughs> and that's what happened that's what happened but you know um that's how i work basically but uh, it's not how some people work obviously have to have a yeah. proper business plan and projections <laughs> and things like that i didn't um but you what you magic with words. <laughs> sorry you do magic with words you are writing books and you are also when you put your words into your spreadsheet like double business in three months it's sometimes like okay <laughs> <laughs> the universe is okay well whatever you wish <laughs> yeah just write it down write it down on a piece of paper just like right that's it and you forget about it then you then when you look back at it and you'll think but yeah yeah i wrote that down and it happened it's so weird <laughs> it's so weird but it's part of my belief it's it's like it's, it's what i believe in so um uh, I'd best start writing a few more things that I want to achieve <laughs> on my next, my next adventure. Um, it's been great talking to you today, Veronica, and yeah, we've had a bit of a laugh. <laughs> and um, it's really interesting what you do. Um, and this thing that you talked about, I've heard the term star seeds before. Um, that's it sounds amazing that you've been able to do something like that and and do and build some course online as well. So you know it sounds really good. Yeah, and uh, perhaps then uh, you might want to uh, drop us a link or something so that I can. Yeah, a, yeah, definitely. I will. Something. I will. Send you, yeah, Sunnaling. I also built in in English the Star Seeds quest starts a journey so if yeah. anybody here feels <laughs> related to this topic you can check it out you can see if it resonates with you and right it was really lovely talking to you too yeah we'll have to go because the time's up unfortunately so yeah talk Thank soon you then <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> bye for now bye